Welcome. Thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you. Because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and, of course, your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is signs and symptoms of youth substance use. And we will be introducing this issue with two professionals. And questions we will be asking are, what are some of the signs and symptoms of use? What should you do if you are concerned? And what should I plan to say to that young person? And I am delighted to present Lisa Huhim, the Safe School Coordinator at North St. Paul, and Kevin Ringhofer, a consultant for Hazleton. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Tina. Oh, I'm so delighted that you could come on Knowledge for Wellness and, of course, educate my viewers. This is such a demanding subject, and there's so many parents out there that are hungry to know what they should do. And, of course, Lisa, we were lucky enough to have you on Knowledge for mm -hmm. Wellness one time before, but I'm not sure the viewers tuned in. So I'd really like for you to tell my viewers your love and your passion and why you went into this line of work. Okay. Well, I, um, I am a licensed alcohol and drug counselor in the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I got my master's degree in, in uh, mental health counseling, mm -hmm. and I'm finishing my um, certificate in marriage and family therapy. This particular topic is extremely personal and important to me okay. um, because my sister died of an overdose, yeah. a drug overdose. And if there's any life that we might be able to save, mm -hmm. if there's any family that we can educate about what to do, what to say, how to get the help for themselves or their children, mm -hmm. um, it's worth it to me. Yes. Um, I don't want anyone to ever have to go through what we went through. Yeah. Um, and it is, it's impacting so many more people now than maybe it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we all can arm ourselves with that education and awareness and knowing what to do and where to go for help. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And of course, Kevin, we're so delighted that you could join us as well. And this is your first time on Knowledge it for is. Wellness. It is. Yes, thank you. Yes. So we'd like for you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself as well. Well, um, my venture into this field was a little bit more accidental. Oh, I mean, okay. actually, I was uh, getting degrees in public health. I have a master's and a PhD in exercise physiology. Okay. And then just happened to have the opportunity to go to work for Hazelden, uh, a little bit because of my public health background and mm -hmm. because of a connection with sports. And we were starting a sports education program at Hazelden, looking at what we could do through sports to prevent substance use problems. Oh, and okay. so that's um, how I got into it. But it was, uh, it's been, it's been over 20 years now and it's been uh, I guess I've grown more and more to really kind of enjoy the work uh, that I do and the type of work that I do and I've had an opportunity while in this field just to see actually even how substance abuse has touched my own life um, oh, okay. in in many ways in terms of kind of looking back and I think that's one of the things that keeps me going in this field is there are many people who are touched by uh, by alcohol and, and other drug use and substance use and the decisions in many cases started very young that mm, yes. young people make. Yeah. And they're very knowledgeable on how they hide it. Yes. Yeah. So we yeah. want to make the public aware as yeah. well in this regard to educate mm -hmm. not only, you know, those that are affected by it, but also someone that wants to prevent something mm -hmm. from happening. Yeah. So I'm glad you're on board for that. Yeah. 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 Well, we want to talk about what are some of the signs and symptoms of youth substance use. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe that we'll direct that to mm -hmm. you, Lisa. Okay. I've worked in the schools for about 10 years, mm -hmm. and um, we had a conversation earlier, you and I, about the importance of talking about use rather than abuse, mm -hmm. because if we can prevent the start, um, teens and adults are much more likely to, to remain healthy. Yes. Um, in the schools, some of the things that we look for, we look social, socially, emotionally, educationally. Um, if one of the number one indicators of, of further risk behavior is truancy and or attendance. Mm -hmm. So that can oftentimes be the number one sign that something's going on with a teen or, yeah. or a young adult. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that teenagers can, can have the highs and lows and all sorts of these risk behaviors that we talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to think about the intensity, 
the severity and the duration of these behaviors because you know kids might skip school and that doesn't mean that they're using drugs right um, we look at attendance change in friends um, isolation if they're isolating from friends from family mm -hmm. um, if they um, are not doing as well in school if they have changed in their eating patterns their sleeping patterns um, if they're engaging in more at-risk behavior, whether it be um, theft or graffiti or, um, um, you know, any other number of risk behaviors, mm -hmm. those are some of the things that can be an initial sign or symptom. So that would be an eye-opener for Absolutely. Mm -hmm. These are the things that say to you, a parent, a concerned adult, a concerned friend, what's mm -hmm. going on with you? Right. Mm -hmm. Can you help me understand why this is happening? Because this is different behavior than what we have seen before. Mm -hmm. If they start dropping out of things that they loved and cared about, whether it be sports or, or drama or speech or, or um, choir, any of those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anytime there's some significant changes with that student, it's very important that we take a look at what might be going on. Right. If they're exhibiting things and saying things like, I want to hurt myself, I want to kill myself, mm -hmm. I'm very depressed. Um, if they're staying out late at night, far more than they used to. Mm -hmm. If they, um, you know, are just very different than what they used to be, that's the time to sit down, have the conversation, and have a real open and honest conversation. Yes. Yeah. And I know even some of the best friends of friends, mm -hmm. they see them pulling away. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign also. And it can well. be as something as simple as they're talking about drug use. They're listening to music that, that uh, discusses drug use. They might be drawing pot leaves on their, on their notebook. It can be very subtle signs. Mm -hmm. but like you said, they get very good at hiding these things yes. from, from the people that they care about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they know their laws. It's yeah. amazing what they talk and amongst themselves, mm -hmm. knowing not to open up the door for a police officer and concerns mm -hmm. like that that they mm -hmm. have. They're very good at hiding. Yes. If they're in possession of drugs, they're very good at hiding it. Mm -hmm. It's a full-time job for us to try to keep up with all the different drug trends that are going yeah. on, mm -hmm. where they can get things, where they can hide things, um, helping them understand the different laws and why it's important that they need to stay safe and they need to stay healthy so they don't end up in jail, they yes. don't end up in treatment. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very savvy. Yes. Yeah.